Hey everyone, for today's skill review we're going to talk about capnography. It's a pretty vital tool in our practice, whether you're an EMT or a paramedic. And yes, it is entering the BLS scope of practice. So we're going to talk about capnography, what it is, how it works, and why it's essential for patient assessment and intervention. So let's start with the basics. Capnography is the measurement of exhaled CO2 or carbon dioxide during breathing. It provides real-time data about the patient's ventilation status and can indicate various medical conditions. Remember, it indicates ventilation, not oxygenation. For oxygenation, you need to attach an SpO2 sensor. So the reason we care about measuring it is because it can confirm proper endotracheal tube placement, assist in the diagnosing of respiratory distress, monitor patients during sedation, evaluate the effectiveness of our resuscitation efforts, and even tell us if our patients are going or in shock. So let's talk about the waveform. When you attach the capnometer to your patient, it's going to produce a waveform like you see on the screen, representing the CO2 levels during the respiratory cycle. There are multiple phases. Phase 1, the baseline, no CO2, is going to be flatline. Phase 2 is going to be the upstroke, the beginning of exhalation. So it's actually the wave going up. Phase 3 is the expiratory plateau, which is steady CO2 levels when you're exhaling, so the top of the waveform. And then there's phase 0, the inhalation, when a patient's CO2 drops as fresh air enters. So now that we understand the phases, we're going to talk about the different type of devices, how to apply it, and we're going to talk about the different readings and what they mean. There are two devices we use to monitor capnography. One's going to be the nasal capnography, and the other's going to be the tube adapter. You're going to want to use nasal capnography for patients with respiratory distress or if you're sedating somebody. Something else to be aware of is that if you're using oxygen through the device, it may wash out your readings. So for a truly accurate reading, make sure no oxygen is flowing through the device. Anytime you're ventilating a patient, you want to have capnography attached, whether you're ventilating with a mask device or through a tube. The tube adapter is universal and will hook up to any tube, whether endotracheal, supraglottic, or whether it's a collar device for a tracheostomy. On the Zoll X-Series monitor, the CO2 line is inserted in the side. Pull down the safety cover and insert the line, twisting it gently clockwise until it seats against the monitor. Don't be too rough or it may break off in the monitor. Then on your home screen, press the soft key button next to CO2. This will now light up. On your screen, you'll see the lines for your waveform capnography. Under numeric capnography, it'll tell you it's initializing. Always zero and calibrate your monitor prior to applying it to the patient. When it's ready, you'll see that it's zero and indicated on the screen it's ready to go. A normal capnography reading will have a normal looking waveform and plateau. It'll also have a numeric reading of 35 to 45. Patients that are hyperventilating are going to have waveforms that are smaller and closer together. They're also going to have a lower CO2 reading. Patients that are hypoventilating are going to have waveforms that are elongated and possibly further apart. You're also going to have a higher CO2 reading because the patient's retaining CO2. In patients with bronchoconstriction, you're going to see the classic shark fin waveform, and this is due to that prolonged expiratory phase when the patient's wheezing or having trouble getting air out. You're also going to notice an increase in the patient's CO2 reading. When using capnography to verify tube placement, it can also indicate esophageal intubation by decreasing numeric numbers and a flattening waveform. When using capnography during a cardiac arrest, we want a reading of 10 or better. If it's less than 10, it can indicate a prolonged downtime or the need to change compressors. If we see a sudden increase in the waveform and numeric reading, it could indicate ROSC. If your patient has an abnormally low reading, it can be indicative of shock. Your patient is no longer adequately perfusing their lungs. To wrap up, here are some key takeaways for using capnography effectively. Always make sure you monitor CO2 levels to assess the effectiveness of ventilation. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the different waveform patterns, what they mean, and what you can do to treat them. Make sure you relate your findings to the patient's clinical status, and always use capnography alongside your other assessment tool for the best patient outcomes. Well, thanks for joining in for today's skill review on capnography. Make sure you click like and subscribe.